ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸಿಂಧಾನ ಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮೀಲಿತಂಗೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೈ ನಮಃ ಅತಿ ಕೋವಿ ವೆರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ So here we have Nati Kovidaha means they were not very expert. In ex- they were not expert. Kovida means expert. Translation. After hearing their master's statement, the envious Asuras who were en- enemies of the demigods and were not very expert in their dealings advised Kangsa as follows. Apart. There are two different types of men the Asuras and the Suras. Bhūbhūta sāgo loke smen daiva āsura eva cha Vishnu bhakta smito daiva āsura patripāyaya ha Those who are devotees of Lord Vishnu, Krishna are called asuras or devas whereas those who are opposed to the devotees are called asuras Devotees are expert in all transactions Yes, yasti bhakti bhagvati kinchara sarvai gunai tatra samasate suraha Therefore they are called Kovita, which means expert. Asuras, however, although superficially showing expertise in passionate activities, are actually all fools. They are neither sober nor expert. Whatever they do is imperfect. Mokasha, Moka, Karmanaha. According to this description of the Asuras given in Bhagavad Gita, whatever they do will ultimately be baffled. It was such persons who advised Kansa because they were his chief friends and ministers. This is, here we have some statements which are apparently opposite to what is observed in epistemology and in Vaishnava, Vaishnava, in Gorya Vaishnava philosophy, that which is established or accepted by Jiva Goswami, there are three sources of evidence which are acceptable. Pratyaksha, Anuman and Shabda Praman. Pratyaksha means that which is observed by our senses, which in Western philosophy leads to empiricism. And Anuman is speculation based on observation, that is rationalism. And Shabda Praman, which Western philosophy doesn't even reach that far, therefore they are perpetually confused and can never come to any conclusion is Shabda Praman, knowledge from authority. Western philosophy, they, they perpetually confuse. In Vedic philosophy, the most important word is Siddhanta, which means the conclusion. But in Western philosophy, there is no conclusion, because everything is simply based on their observation and guesswork. And you can never come to any fixed conclusion. Because Krishna is beyond the powers of seeing and speculating achintya kalo ye bhavana tam chokena yojya prakchevya prang yajcha tadachintya tya lakshanam the very nature of that which is aprakrita beyond the material energy is that it is inconceivable to the brain therefore it's not even worth trying to understand it by brain power now the empiricists and rationalists both accept or both reject appeal to authority because of statements like this I mean this is not the most apparently outrageous statement of Shastra what, what statement I'm referring to that the demons are all inexpert and the devotees are expert there are many more which are and this is, could be subject to discussion But statements such as there is a banyan tree eight million miles high and wide under which Lord Shiva sits with snakes around him. And Lord Vishnu has four hands, sometimes six hands, sometimes eight hands, sometimes more. Universal form is Sāvata Pānipādanta Sāvata Uchi Shiro Makam In the Vishwa Rupa He has many, many hands, legs, arms, eyes. So it appears to be some fantastic statement. Now why is it said here that the demons 
they are not expert whereas the devotees they are expert in their dealings because often we see that devotees they, they don't appear to be so very expert in their dealings whereas often it seems that the demons are much more expert they, the demons they build even there's one story on that uh, the uh, erstwhile Hari Kesh Maharaj told this story he was flying with Prabhupada and Prabhupada called he was flying and Prabhupada was called by the captain into the cockpit of a commercial flight which is against the rules but anyway they did it with you once too right? you told me? yeah it's against the rules but anyway they called they liked, they took a light to Prabhupada and they called to show a hands off landing means a computer guided landing so then Prabhupada said to Hari Kesh Maharaj it's amazing what these demons can do they're very expert I mean after all to make a plane which something which is heavier than air to fly in the sky is significantly heavier than air to fly in the sky and to land perfectly even without personal hands on control it requires a high level of intelligence and organization of course as Prabhupada pointed out even the best self- someone disagreed with that statement? Well, you can always disagree. Anyway, Prabhupada, he said that 747 jumbo jet, it may be very expertly designed, but it's not as well designed as a mosquito. Because a mosquito, one thing it reproduces, if they did that, then there'd be no, in Seattle, half of Seattle would be out of work. If the planes, because it's the home of Boeing. Another thing, Prabhupada gave the example that even though these mosquitoes, they fly around, even there may be hundreds flying, sometimes you go in a room and you hear, you hear some sounds, some loud sound. And then you look and there's some kind of cloud in the corner. What is it? It's about 2,000 mosquitoes all flying around. But they don't bump into each other. There's no computer guided radar system. But they don't crash, whereas the 747 uh, is, well, we don't want to say something that will get us a libel statement from Boeing. But not only Boeing, but Aeroflot, which that's, that's a company, not a, not, it's an airline, not a manufacturer, but any, whatever they are, Aerobus, Boeing, they crash, the tendency is for them to crash. Indian Army planes, every two days you look in the paper, even when there's not a fighting, a major fight in Kashmir, they're always crashing their planes. So, uh, this man made plane, it may be very expertly made, but it crashes. But even the mosquitoes, they're flying together all around, they don't crash with each other. So the brain of God is better, because He made. Of course, the, the non devotees they will deny God. They'll say, they'll, but you see, they'll write in their scientific books, nature has designed this in such a way. They write like that. They write that nature has designed, but they won't say that God has designed. They say nature has designed, because they're demons. They won't admit. A design means there's a person, you rascal. But there's a nature, or how did nature design by chance? What a nonsense idea. Imagine if you get, a, you get appointed to a job designing bridges. And then how are you going to do it by chance? What's your, what's your method of designing bridges by chance? My idea is that you just get a whole bunch of bricks and steel and girders and pull all the laborers and they should just throw it off. And even then there's some effort involved. There's some organization involved. And then at the end you have a bridge. You're not going to get a job. You have to design it so perfect. If, if a little thing wrong is, is wrong in your calculation or in your construction, then when the uh, Prime Minister opens the bridge and drives over it, then the bridge will break and he'll fall down. And the, the designer will be executed. It is in China. He's in India, he might pay the judge and get off. So, uh, 
The point is there that the demons, they, anyway they are very intelligent, not as intelligent as God, that's their foolishness. Here you see Kamsa is very intelligent, he's being guided by his ministers who are all very intelligent, but they're not as intelligent as God. That is why they're called Nati Kovida. They may be Kovida experts, but they are not Ati Kovida, they're not extremely or highly intelligent and expert means because their plans will ultimately be frustrated. Moghasha, Mogha Karmano, Mogha Jnana Vichetisa, Rajasimha Sarin Chaiva, Mohinin. What is that? What's the last line? Mohinin. Mohinin Shrita. I always forget this last line. Anyway, it means that those who are demoniac, their activities, their intelligence, their plans, are always frustrated. Why? Because, because they make a basic mistake in the very beginning of their calculation. Just like if you make an expert calculus calculation. Now it requires much intelligence and study and so many things to do that. But in the course of that, if you make a basic arithmetical mistake, it always comes out wrong. I used to do this all the time. I did. When I was in prison, I mean in school, they, uh, I was doing in the advanced that they have in England they used to have it, I think they changed it, they have general exam, it's like HSC, I was doing something like that, so we had three subjects, one of mine was maths, math in America. So I always had this problem, like I was pretty good at the math and the algebra and the geometry, trigonometry, calculus and all that, I could understand how it worked, but I always made stupid arithmetic mistakes, simple mistakes in the course of doing it. So at the end of doing this whole long calculation over several pages, it would always come out wrong. I had to go through the whole thing and check it all again, and finally find out the arithmetic mistake and get it right. So that's an example. You may be good doing the different calculations, but if you make some basic mistake, it all comes out wrong. So the asuras, they're very, they may be very expert in making plans, just like there's the new plan for Gujarat. As you see, I saw in the paper in South India, a whole page they put in the newspaper. 2010 year plan. By the year 2010, Gujarat will be the most prosperous state in India, and they'll be, they're making a big infrastructure, roads and factories, and Gujarat will be exporting all over the world, and it's a big plan. By Keshuba. Of course, whether he'll be alive to see it, or that's another question. It's getting pretty old. Anyway, they have all these big, big plans which requires a lot of intelligence to even think about it, let alone execute it. And they may execute it, you never know. They do some things. But there's something basic mistake in their plan. The basic mistake is that they think they will be happy by material acquisition and development. That's the basic mistake. That everything seems wonderful. We'll, we're going to build roads and factories and the cities will be clean in Gujarat and the people will be nice because we're going to have nice civic relations and amenities and we're going to look after you and everything will be wonderful. But there's one mistake there. However wonderful it is, you can't be happy in this material world. Actually, whenever I go to the West, you go to, go to England or someplace, and see, compared to India, actually the government in many ways, they make nice arrangements for the people. In every city there's plenty of gardens, and they're well laid out, and there's pretty, fairly nice houses, even for the common worker, or even if you're not working, you have a pretty decent place to live in, and the roads are good, and there's signs on the road telling you go this way, or if there's a traffic jam up ahead, they'll put some sign, take a delay the head, take another route. Very expertly arranged. Everything very expertly arranged, but nevertheless, people are miserable. They have very nice arrangements, but they have very nice parts, but people go there and get drunk and kill each other, for instance. Or it's not safe to go in such a park because someone will come and loot you. So there's something basically wrong 
in that calculation, although they have very expertly organized it. There's something basically wrong in that calculation, they have made the mistake that by, but by material organization and making material immunities, we will be happy, but you can never be happy. Basic mistake. So it said that devotees, they're the most expert. As we see that, I mean, our experience, you don't have to be very experienced in this Krishna conscious movement. Anyone who's a little bit intelligent, they walk in the dawn and can see that our devotees, they're not that well organized, generally. Or usually, I'm not saying about this door in particular, but any door in our movement. Well, actually, often people say, when they say, oh, your movement, it's, your temples are very well organized and well managed. We're surprised when they say that, because when they, when they, from the outside it looks pretty good, but when you get into you see all the defects. I get any organization, even IBM or whatever. It looks good on the outside, but once you get inside, you'll find this. Yeah, especially in county organizations, there's so much politics and so many things. So anyway, uh, we can see in our movement that there's so many defects in our organization, so many things we could be doing better. Basically, it seems that most of the people, because it may be changing now in India, we have people like Dr. Amsham and Gornitai, MD or whatever it is, joining our movement. But basically, as some of our disciples or God nephews of people say that Prabhupada's disciples are basically a bunch of hippies, which is true. Most of them. Of course, the hippies were from middle class backgrounds, but mostly dropouts. So we often see that people who are not very materially expert are not even very interested in being materially expert. They join our movement. And they don't necessarily become much more materially expert even after joining. So how can it be said that the demons, they are not equal to that. They are not very expert. But the devotees, they are expert. Because often we see that the opposite is true. That the non-devotees or demons, they are very expert in organization. Devotees, some of them may be expert, but generally, at least my experience so far in this room, is that I would say it's not a... Don't shoot me down now, but it's not a very expertly managed movement. So how is it said that... How is it said that uh, devotees, they are most experts in their dealings? Because, despite some apparent or either apparent or actual material ineptitude, the devotees endeavor to lead them back to God, to Krishna. So whatever they do, even though it may not be very expertly executed, if it's meant for the pleasure of Krishna, then it will serve the purpose of human life, which is to become Krishna conscious, to get free from birth and death and go back home. Back to Godhead. Back to Krishna. And factually, we can see in our movement also, by this example, that um, as much as we are Krishna conscious, that much, one way or the other, things tend to work out. But if we try to manage simply on some material proof, then somehow the then if Krishna's pleased, things tend to work out. If, if Krishna's not pleased, however expertly we may make plans, things don't work out. From time to time, our movement, we hear of different ideas how to organize nuns, this different ma management experts, how to manage this way, that way, the other. You see, read, there are so many famous Karni books. Now, the Search for Excellence was a famous book, and, and the devotees were getting all excited about this. And then more recently, we've had Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of. No doubt, uh, these people, they're intelligent people, and they have seen some good principles of management which could be applied in our movement, no doubt. Nevertheless, we see that uh, unless there's a very clear and sincere desire to please Krishna in our activities, then things don't work out. 
it may things may appear to be very good for some time. I remember some years ago there was one the powerful and prominent GBC come guru in our movement who was making there was there was some horizontal and vertical system of management, this very complex, top-heavy system of management which he instituted in his own and his own was flourishing in so many ways and they were distributing more books than anyone else, making more devotees, lots of Lakshmi and then uh, the whole thing collapsed because he collapsed. It collapsed horizontally and vertically. It all fell in. So, I mean, uh, without wanting to unnecessary for little uh, person. It, it, in retrospect, and many people at the time also, could see that along with his desire for Krishna to please Krishna, it wasn't that he was totally non-Krishna conscious, but there was a lot of consideration of prestige and I'm the best and all this kind of thing. There was some material desire was there or some idea that I am the doer by manipulating or organizing in this way I will control better than others and I will show others how I'm the best. And it seems that Krishna wasn't pleased because the whole thing collapsed. So often we see that Someone may be very materially expert, but if he thinks that by his materially expert, material expertise he will do better than others, or he becomes proud of that, then Krishna withdraws his mercy. Ultimately this wound is running on on Krishna's mercy, which is very good news, because if it's only up to our material competence, it would have closed down years ago. Another example comes to mind in this regard, that uh, some devotees, Prabhupada made Satsvarup Maharaj a GPC and devotees complained. Not exactly complained, because devotees didn't complain in those days, but uh, nowadays it's, things have changed a bit. But uh, some devotees noticed to Prabhupada that actually he's, you know, he's a wonderful devotee, but he's not a very expert manager, which anyone who knows, knows. That's true, Maharaj, he's a wonderful devotee, but he's not an expert manager. The Prabhupada said, yes, but I want him to be a leader because he does what I say. If I tell him to do something, he does it. That was his criteria. Prabhupada actually said, leader means leader in hearing and chanting. A leader in Krishna consciousness is not necessarily one who's expert in organizing this way and that way, but if he can inspire others to hear and chant about Krishna, then ultimately everything will come out nicely. Very organized and very expertly and everything's done down to the second. I mean, that's also good. It's not that we shouldn't have. I'm not making a case for it. If we are materially well organized, very good. A substitute for having Krishna's mercy, which is the, it is the vital factor in our spiritual life. Either individual, can you sit like this? Either individually or collectively, the vital factor in Krishna consciousness is Krishna's mercy, which is attained by the sincere desire to serve Him. So that's what comes a lot. He's very expert, no doubt. To become king and conquer over so many other kings, it requires some expertise. But he had made a basic mistake in his calculation. He was thinking that he could knock out God. God was also a factor in his calculation, but he was thinking the only problem, see, the only problem is this son of David. Everything is perfect. I'm in control. You see? Lord Brahma, he's not going to interfere. Lord Shiva, he's just meditating. Lord Vishnu is hidden in the hearts of everybody. And the other day he got headed by Indra, they're just flies in front of him. This is what comes to say. Nevertheless, he was disturbed by the oracle that he would be killed by the eighth child of David. So he very expert. Now there's only one problem he thought to my ruling the world 
Indra is not a problem, Chandra is not a problem. Just this eighth child of Devaki. So, he made the his ministers advised him. Previously you thought to kill all the children of Devaki, one, but that oracle was there. Now, you have another information that the child who is to kill you will be born elsewhere. So what's the solution? Kill all the children. That will be the solution. They were not able to do it. They weren't able to kill any children in Bhajra. Otherwise Krishna wouldn't have had any cowhead boyfriends to play with. What happened? They just killed all the demons' children. A miscalculation. So, uh, the demons, they always make a miscalculation. Now, if Kamsa had made the calculation that actually I'm just a demon, I can never be happy as a demon, I should just surrender to Krishna, then it would have been very nice. But he was never going to say such a thing, because he's a demon. He has pride in being a demon. Proud, I'm not going to surrender, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to follow that. By my own strength, his own pride is going to exist. So, uh, by his own strength he existed, and by his own lack of strength before Krishna, he was finished. Whereas the devotee always surrenders to Krishna. He may go through so many difficulties, but he remains humble. He made the right calculation that if I simply depend on Krishna, however incompetent I may personally be, Krishna will ultimately help me. That's the fact. That's why the devotee, his plan is always the best. Because his plan is how to case Krishna. Of course, he should know how to do that. Not that. Just like in Moscow, he saw a tie dress, something like Mae West or something like this, some kind of unusual kind of dressing. <laughs> kind of funny, look like some funny woman's fashion or something. So we should know what Krishna wants. We should learn what Krishna wants. Someone that yesterday was asked, was asked me that, well, why do you have to do this art? Why do you have to have this art in bhakti? What's the point? So, well, Krishna likes it. That's why, because bhakti is meant to please Krishna. So why? Because Krishna likes it. That's all. Why do you offer Krishna all this food? Why don't you offer me? He can eat anything, he doesn't like it, he doesn't want it. So you have to know what Krishna wants. Then you have to execute, then Krishna will be satisfied. If you act according to your own imagination or speculation or own false pride, even you may offer to Krishna what he likes. One thing is if you offer what Krishna doesn't like, then he won't like it. Therefore you have to act under the direction of Krishna's devotee who knows what Krishna likes. The other point is, even if you offer the right thing, just like I was giving that example of one Guru GPC with flourishing zone, so many people joining, so many books published, meeting so many big people. But you're doing all the right things, but you're doing it with a kind of false crack. And Krishna didn't like it. So Krishna didn't accept it, that we can see. Ultimately, he... He didn't accept that the person had to fall down. So these are important principles of Krishna consciousness to understand. From a materialist point of view, it doesn't seem to make any sense that devotees are more expert than demons. But ultimately it's true. This is how we have to understand. Hare Krishna. Is there any question or comment? I'm sure you have a comment. No? Oh, that's nice. Hare Krishna. You're doing so many exercises with weights. Why don't you do some exercise to make your knees more supple so that you can sit in the class? Well, you know, he, every five minutes or so he decides he wants to do a different service. So the last thing he came up with when we were in Vidyanag was that he'd like to stay there. So, there's a lot of service to do. He's a little mentally out of whack, yeah. Anyway, 
Balabhadra was most, you know, he was very upset and he was crying so many tears that he lost such a valuable man to his party, but eventually I convinced him that, you know. <laughs> Okay, before you go see me, I have a message for Hamadaman. Okay, is there any question by the way before we get into all these discussions? Yeah. you have in your bank account? Wait a minute, how much is in your bank account? How much is in your bank account? You don't have one. Stick it under your pillow, be careful, someone might steal it. <laughs> well, I don't know, I mean, what can you answer? People don't have faith, what can you do? I mean, um, I mean, I personally, I never uh, thought of such a thing. I, I thought, if no one looks after me in my old age, it'll be good. And then I can completely depend upon Krishna. And then I can go back to God. That's what I thought. And now it looks like being a sannyasi and a guru and have disciples. And it looks like, you know, if, if I live to be old, and if my disciples live to be old, and if anyone, maybe one of them will look after me. Although I never, you know. If not, then great, I'll go to better. I can go to Vrindavan and eat the dust and die that way. Uh, another thing you want to say? What's the answer to that? Yeah, I know some instances from that. So when they're already studying, how about to say to finish? Yeah, if they were very close to finishing, but mostly he told in his lectures there's no need of material education. There was one boy in Hyderabad who had done one year of college and he wanted to be joining the DI. And Prabhupada said there's no need of letters specifically that there's no use for him to join the DI unless someone has a PhD to join the DI. Thank you. 
If a brahmachari is collecting money to give his security, he should get married, and he will get married. Because he has faith in more faith in money than in Krishna. He's in the wrong ashram. He's in the wrong ashram. He was born, he was 16 years old, so he didn't go to school. Chirani King Patina, that verse is there, he yeah. As they say, it's gone out in a lock up. That's not it's gone function anyway. Yeah, it's not It wasn't. It wasn't set up as a welfare society. It's not a government. That's what people think is there is a government, and it has to perform the functions of the government, which is the you know the the king who needs to look after the health of the people. Definitely if someone they join at the age of 18 and they, they spend their whole life serving, they, they, they're going to get locked up. So, you know, I mean... Even if you don't, then you know, you can go to Vrindavan and eat the dust. Like I say, someone will give you some chapatis, even now in Vrindavan. So many places, well, there are so many places, so many places in India where they have Anakshetra daily. In so many places. In, uh, Okay, so the 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 some substance of this is is if you if you feel like that then you should get married. That's all. And then you may hope your kids will look after you in your old age, which they might do, or they might not. Of course, you're not likely to go back to God, which is why you joined this, which is supposed to be the reason that you joined this movement, because you're thinking about your security and your material body and all this kind of thing. I mean, people might say, well, that's kind of callous and cruel, but material life is, material life is cruel and we're supposed to get detached. That's the purpose of this movement. We didn't join this movement as a kind of religion which works as a social welfare organization. Then you should join the Mormons. They do a great job. I mean, really. If you want, if you want social welfare come religion, then you should join the Mormons. Because they're, they're very strong on that. But actually our movement, there may be some social welfare, but it's not the aim and object of our movement. The aim and object of our movement is to become detached from the material body and become attached to Krishna. So if people say like that, tell them, go and join the Mormons. They'll look after you great. Maybe they will too. They're in Maya anyway. Yeah, what I'm seeing is that many devotees, they want to be independent and at the same time have the facilities of the institution. Now, if you join a temple, and work under the guidance of the temple president, then in due course of time, your, the temple president will arrange for you to go to the various festivals. If you live in South America, probably not. Now what to do? They don't have enough. Now if you live in Russia, they probably won't. 
Now, if you're independent, then you can get your own money together and do what you like and buy whatever you like, but you can't expect at the same time to get the facilities of someone who is dependent and surrendered to the temple authorities. You can't have it both ways. I know there was one devotee from Russia was complaint in, in South India, he was just saying exactly these same things to me. You know, they won't look after you and this and that. Well, that's because you're independent. If you join a temple and just simply work under the temple person, then you'll get your dhoti and you'll get your prasadam and you, you do what they say and in course of time, maybe after one or two years, they'll send you to Mayapur and they'll send you to Vindhya because they do with all the devotees there. But if, if you want to do, you know, cook up your, your own program and do it, you know, do go whenever you like, whenever you want, and then uh, how do you expect that the, the, the town person is going to uh, oversee? You can't have it both ways. Either be dependent or independent. If you're dependent, then you get a certain kind of facility that comes with that. And if you're independent, then you make your independent arrangements and don't complain that no one's looking after you. Yeah. to be dependent, he's not supposed to be independent, he's supposed to work under that state. If you are going to be a brahmachari, it should work under some authority. Brahmachari guru kole vasam dhanta guru hitam. So you personally have a, a far larger measure of independence than most brahmacharis.